okay now we also have an option to optimize uh, for optimization we can use some of the other plugins called optimize CSS assets plugin and uglify JS plugin so let's go ahead and do that so inside of the module dot exports uh, what we'll do is below the module we'll put optimization and over here we'll set it as we'll put the name as minimizer okay and inside of this this will be an array and then we have a plugin that we installed called optimize CSS assets plugin for optimization so I'll put that there const require optimize CSS assets webpack plugin again I'll not go into the detail of it you can check it out like we did for the other packages and then I'm going to use that over here I'll say new optimize CSS plugin and inside of that it takes op object and then it takes CSS processor and then it takes the CSS nano for this so again we have to include the CSS nano so I'm just going to go ahead and require that on top so just want to show you what this CSS nano does okay so if you take a look what does it do it takes your nicely formatted CSS and runs it into main many focused optimization to ensure final result is as small as possible for production because we want to keep our CSS bundle as small as possible so you can see that this like nicely formatted with comments and everything and now there is no comment and everything you know it has gone ahead and made it as small as possible so like for example if the original was 325 bytes it is minified to 177 bytes the difference is like 54.46 percent which is like huge so for optimization of our site this is going to be really helpful now some of you will say to me that hey Imran can I not use plugins that are available that does all of the job for me why do I have to you know set all of these configurations myself and why do I have to you know take packages because there are uh, why do I have to install packages like CSS Nano I mean I have WordPress plugins available that can do for me well yes you can but let me tell you that when you are installing plugins uh, from WordPress org you're actually increasing dependency for your project right because a lot of times those plugins will not come with just one feature but many other features as well which you may not require for your project and then you are being dependent on the code that someone else has written and security lies in the hand of the people who have developed it right so to minimize all of the dependency if you want to keep the packages uh, if you want to keep the WordPress plugins as minimal as possible you can handle these things on your own as well so it's completely your choice I'm just letting you know that you know it is possible that you can do this yourself in your package in your theme itself you don't require a plugin for that okay great so we've got the CSS Nano over here so I'm just gonna go down uh, yep and I'm gonna pass that over here like CSS Nano so go ahead and use that for optimization purposes and the last plugin will be uglify so this is gonna uglify the uh, JS for us so so this is gonna uglify for us so I'll say const uglify require so we had we did install this packages or this package also if you remember so uglify webpack plugin again you can take a look at what it it does in depth but yeah let's just include it so I'll give a comma I'll say new uglify and it takes certain options like cache set to false parallel set to true you can take a look at what all these parameters are on the plugins page okay source map set to false okay so we need to explicitly explicitly set the source map when we are actually going ahead and using uh, you know the dev tool as source map over here we have to set this here as well okay uh, so we're setting it to false for uglifying purposes all right great and just one correction here the der name will actually be having a trailing slash so I'm just going to remove this from here okay and let's just ensure the webpack file I'm just moving it inside of the assets folder because it needs to be inside it needs to be inside of the assets folder 
Okay, great. So I think we're all set. And over here, this clean webpack plugin needs to be destructured. We need to pull the clean webpack plugin like this. Okay, so now I think we're all set to run the npm run dev. Let's hit it. Uh, now it's running in the development mode. And there you go. You can see it's bundling. And if you take a look, so it has emitted the main.js. So let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to go to the webpack config and explain to you. So it takes an entry. So where do you want to take your file from? So I'm going to go. So if you take a look at the entry, it says that get hold of the main.js path. So where is the main.js path? This is the one. Okay. So take the main.js and then when you output it, output it inside of the builds directory, which is this build. Here it is. And then inside of builds directory, put that file inside of a JS folder. So is it inside of JS folder? Yes, it is. So you can see that inside of JS folder. Then whatever the name of the file is. So the name of the file is main.js, right? So it's going to replace this with the name. So main.js, that's it. That's what we've got here. And why we are getting this map, you see? So we're getting the sources, where the sources are from, all of the sources information. You can see that, you know, it gives each and every detail of uh, what's inside of the main.js. So it has, it is actually sourcing the index.js from the clock, this one. So if you open main.js, you can see that it's importing that. So it has that information. It has information that it's importing the uh, cat.jpg. You can see that it has that information as well. So basically, uh, it keeps track of all of the information uh, you know that is available in the main.js. It's got the in form of a map. Okay, uh, so that's because we have set the source map uh, inside of the dev tool. Okay, for the dev tool, the value is source map. That's why that's coming. If you set that to false, then this map file won't be generated. Okay, great. Uh, then for the single as well, same thing is happening. For the single as well, so we have the single.js bundled and it's picking up from here. So this is the entry point and this is the output. Okay. And uh, for the, yeah, for the image, you can see that it's putting that inside of the source directory and inside of the cat.jpg. Okay. So for image, it's just putting it here. For path, it's picking up the uh, path of the image. So the path of the image is source and then image. So that's and then cat.jpg and that's exactly what it is done. So take a look. Source image cat.jpg source image cat.jpg. So that's what it's doing. It's taking the path, the name of the image which is cat, uh, and the extension which is jpeg. So that's what it's doing over here. Okay, awesome. So you can see how this is doing it, and then uh, later on when we actually set up the SaaS, you will see that it's also going to bundle the CSS for you. Uh, so it's going to pick up the sauce extension and bundle it for you. So we're going to move our, uh, you know, styles that we have written instead of the styles.css and into our sauce files later on. Okay. Uh, the last thing we want to do is change the. Yeah. The last thing we want to do is basically change the NQ path. So what we want to do is go to functions.php, and I'm going to create a constant over here. So I'll say Aquila build URI. So we want to get the build URI. Okay. So get template directory URI and then dot, oops, and then dot slash build. Okay. So this is the build directory URI. And I can also have a JS directory URI. So I can do build JS URI. So this will go to build and then slash JS. Similarly, I can have for the images. So again, build images. So image. And this can be. So we have source, sorry, we have inside of the build, we have source, and then we have images. So I'll put build, source, oops, source, slash, image. 
So now we've got the image directory. Do we have anything else? I think eventually we'll have the CSS as well. So I'm just going to define it for now uh, so that it's handy. So build, and then this is going to be CSS URI. So build, and then CSS. So this will come later when we are actually setting up the SAS and everything. I'm just keeping it for reference for now. Okay. Awesome. So if you've got the build uh, URI constants that have been defined, uh, all we have to do is just go to our file, which is the class assets and change it over here. So we've done with the, so currently we are including the bootstrap from the library. We will change to that probably in the next video, but yeah, we can do the main.js for sure. So for the main.js currently, the main.js is coming from the assets directory. So we're going to change this to builds directory. So we'll say Aquila build JS URI. So this is going to give me the path up, up until JS and then just the main.js over here. That's it. Okay. And this also, okay. We want the directory path also. So I'll have to change that. Hold on. I'll have to add that actually. So build URI directory path. Yeah. So I'm just going to add build JS directory path. And this is going to be get template directory. And then this is the path. Okay, same thing goes for the CSS as well. Sorry, the image as well. No, not for image. Actually, we don't require for image, but we do need it for CSS. So I'll add that here. So instead of JS, this will be CSS. And over here, this will be CSS. Okay, good. So we want the build JS directory path, and I'm going to come over here and put that like so. Awesome. So this is done for the main.js and probably in the next video we can also take care of the libraries. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Uh, do give star to my repository to support my work and follow me on GitHub. You can start it. And also you can nominate me for the GitHub stars by going on to stars.github.com if you like my work. All right. Brilliant. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.